Here, you can exercise your rights to freedom every day without leaving your home. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stay in City way. Welcome to Real Talk with me, Anele. So recently in our news headlines, spread like wildfire leading to heated debates and South African citizens were torn by a new legislation that makes banking your child illegal. The South Gauteng High Court found that the common law defense of reasonable chastisement was no longer in line with South Africa's constitution. Numerous opinions arose from people of different ages, cultures and religions. To discuss this topic, I've invited guests who are on different sides of the fence regarding the matter to unpack all you and I need to know and should actually know when it comes to disciplining your child according to the law. My first guest is an attorney and deputy director of the Center for Child Law. She researches, publishes, and lectures in the area of child law at the University of Pretoria. We welcome Garabo Oza. Thank you. Okay, so here's the thing. So the South Gauteng Court, you know, makes this ruling and everyone loses their mind. What was the rule before that? So, yes, yeah, so we had the common law defense. So you can trace common law to like your 1913 or so, um, which is a defense that provides that if you as a parent um, use uh, physical punishment on your child, uh. um, it, you have a defense that's called reasonable chastisement. Now, that means that um, it's considered that it can be measured in a way. So if it's um, to correct and it doesn't, um, according to people, go beyond certain bounds, mm. then you cannot be prosecuted for it. So that has always been like a special defense that mm. parents had in relation to when they use physical punishment in relation to their children. So when you say certain bounds, prior to that, were parents aware, I mean, what certain bounds were? Like, what, was there like a legality, like, you know, if your child bleeds, then we have a problem. Mm. You see, that's part of the controversy of it, that um, one, there were, there were at attempts to say, well, if it's an open smack on the bum mm. of a child who's slightly built, or this kind of built, or this kind of age, which uh. is part of the, 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 the issue with it, is that you had to, you know, use that kind of uh, language to say, well, mm. it was an open hand, just on the bottom, according to some people done lovingly, then it's fine. So those are the kind of things that, you know, are, are creating a challenge. Yeah, um, there's too much gray area, ne? Yes. Yeah. So, um, and, um, and then so now came this court case before the court, and I must actually quickly explain that. What happened is Please. that there was a father who was being charged uh, for assaulting his wife and the child. And when um, the case came before the court in relation to the child, he said he acted between his um, 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 right to reasonably chastise his child. Mm. And that's when the high court said, well, hang on, um, is this defense still even compatible with um, our constitution and what is expected of us as, as a country in relation mm. to child protection? And then that's when they invited um, different organizations, um, formally through the court rules, to make um, submissions, including the Minister of um, uh, Social, Social Development. Development. Minister of Justice did not make any submissions. But that's how everybody then got an opportunity to make submissions and to try and assist the court to coming to a finding. So when they look at a case like that, do they not think, okay, you know, he's beating up his wife, he's beating up his child, this is not a reasonable man? I know that that's part of the, the, th the, 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 the preaching that we're trying to do now, yeah. is that we cannot see this in isolation. There are links that, that people are don't want to see or maybe are trying to say, well, no, not really, not in my house. A child is a child, a woman is a woman. Yeah. And we must also point out that until 2000, when the Domestic Violence Act process came and there was a constitutional court judgment actually that looked into why is it that it's no longer acceptable for men to beat wives? Because remember in the past it was also it was allowed. Okay. You, exactly. <laughs> so how that also developed. And if you look at the reasoning of the court and actually the fact that after that, the Domestic Violence Act came, which already already tells you that mm. um, you, you're not allowed to use um, physical um, uh, uh, punishment in a way, you know, it's an assault, is an assault. It's just that when it comes to a child, you have a special defense. So there is a disjuncture, in, there was before mm. the court, uh, you know, made this finding about the common law defense that you have provisions that tell you to protect children, you have the Domestic Violence Act, but then you then have this um, 
there's this kind of a special treatment of when it's a parent um, that they can then reason according yeah. to that. And I mean, in this case before the court, because the finding of the court is not retrospective, the court did find that that particular father um, had gone beyond the bounds of, yes. of reasonable chastisement. Now, you know, it's, it, it's not cases that happen every day. I know one of the things that people are going on about is, is that, that it's, it was an extreme case. So what's that father's punishment now? Is he going he, to jail? Is he paying a fine? He got a suspended sentence, so I think that's another thing that people should understand that when it comes to <laughs> sentencing, um, you know, the sentence must match the offense, and, mm -hmm. and um, depending on what the court finds, it's not it's a simple thing of the parents will go to prison. It doesn't work that because way. Because everyone is saying that, like, if I go to prison, who's going to take care of my kids? Yes. You know, what's the answer to that? Because if I get a suspended sentence and then I do it again and I do it again, ultimately I'm going to, according to the law, have to end up in prison. Yes, yeah, so I think as I start, we're trying to explain to people that this is not to uh, criminalize parents. This is to try yeah. and say, we have a serious problem in South Africa with violence against children. We need to see that context. And research is starting to show that in some cases, there's a link between just the, what people call smacking mm. with um, serious abuse that then comes later. I think in the High Court in Pretoria right now, there's a case about the child called Poppy, mm. where if you read a bit about it, you can see that the, it's, it sounds like it started with just smacking and the brother complained at school and all that, and nobody helped those children to a point that the, the young girl now was killed. They mm. all died at the hands, you know, allegedly of the parents. But those are the kinds of things that we're trying to, to make people sit up to. What we're saying and what the Minister of Social Development also said, and even the judge said in her judgment, mm. is that we're saying that we need to find different ways of raising our children, of disciplining them, because mm. disciplining is part of teaching them. Discipline doesn't equal physical yeah. or corporal punishment. Yeah. And that's one disciplining of the is building character. You see, so those are the things that we're starting to know more about the effects, negative effects yeah. of corporal punishment, and we need to open our minds up to it. There is a challenge in that uh, people will say, well, what is this positive discipline that everybody says now we must promote? In the Children's Act, there are already provisions about early intervention pr uh, programs and positive discipline. And there's actually provisions that if a, if a parent uh, has been found that they, they did something wrong to the child and it's a, through a children's court process, yeah. they can be referred to parenting classes and all those kind of things to try and address the the situation. Much so like you'd be referred to anger management Exactly, classes. exactly. Ah. So it's not a, a thing that now overnight parents will be hauled before the NPA and being charged and, and all those things. It's, it's <laughs> no not one's coming in a van to take you away. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we uh, went to the streets to find out what people think about this. Let's roll those voice notes. So, there's some things that kids do that you can't really reprimand them in the sense that you're going to talk to them. There has to be some form of physical punishment. How do you make sure that next time they don't do that wrong? Will that physical punishment itself solve, solve the issue or do you mm. need to sit them down? Um, I've had people who say that, well, their parents used to use physical punishment, but they will also explain to them. So some people will say that. But I mean, you know, if a child is not doing good in maths at school, you beating them up <laughs> to death. Oh, sorry, I took the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, if you're doing, you know, will that hitting, hiding that you, you got 50 uh, out of 100, will that solve the, the, the issue? Yeah. And I think those are the, th those are the difficult things. Parenting is, is mm. difficult, I think. And people need to take time right now as, as we, we get to know better about parenting and as we want mm. a better society with less violence. Uh, we have a problem in South Africa with bullying. P you know, psychologists would tell you mm. children model what they see. Those so are some of the challenges, you know. You, you find that that's how you exert power at school. And some of the research that we even put before the court, because we were representing um, Songe, which I know a colleague from Songe is here, yeah. the Children's Institute and uh, Quaker Peace Center. The Children's Institute has done research on violence very recent. There's now a serious worry in the country, obviously, and money is being put into researching the linkages between violence in schools, in yeah. homes, and child deaths, because we have, you know, mortality rate of children dying be, be, uh, below the age of five mm. um, from, from things like um, homicide, if you can call it that. It's, it's, it's worrying. It's so, so we're trying to now find the linkages. And when you look at that, you, you, you cannot say, well, you know, it's my home, it's my home. I think we must remember that the Constitution gives a duty to the courts, gives a duty to all of us to try and, and protect the children. Mm. Terrible. Thank you so much for your time. So many of you are going to sit down today and convince me of their case. You are very convincing. I can see the legal background behind you there. You're not, you are not alone. Uh, that was Garaba Oza from the Center for Child Law. We all agree that child abuse must stop, but of course not everyone agrees with the new legislation. More after the break, our conversation today, disciplining your children and the laws around it. Stay with us.
And welcome back to Real Talk with me, Anele, on SABC3, the stage is yours. The ACDP expressed strong opposition to the Gauteng High Court ruling that it is illegal to spank your own child. Joining me in studio now is ACDP Member of Parliament, who is also a mother and a grandmother. We welcome to the show, Sherilyn Dudley. Nice how, to be here. <laughs> how was it when you were sitting with everyone else? Because you guys are like opposing views. I was, I was hoping, I hope you guys are at least speaking to each other. Well, the difficulty of today's world is that we all have our desk in our hand, so we don't stop working, okay, so good. we were fine. Okay, at least at least you were preoccupied and you we couldn't were, like, we pull were. people into like debates because I want it all to happen here. We were. So the ACDP, they oppose this ruling. Why is that? Well, we see it as a, a clear instance of, of the overreach of the judicial um, authority. Mm. Um, it really, and that particular case as well, was a case that the judge could clearly make a decision in terms of it being abusive. In isolation, so there was, to not yeah, so there was no, there, there was the, the, So the laws that we have in South Africa were completely um, appropriate and effective, um, and so there was absolutely no reason for her have mm. to, to have to take it further and usurp actually the job of members of parliament. Now, as a member of parliament for the last 18 years, mm. I have been involved for the longest time um, on the Social Development Committee, and we tangled with that for over 10 years mm -hmm. and members of parliament at the end of the day came to the conclusion that it was not going to be helpful in t uh, for the um, reasonable chastisement clause to be lifted mm -hmm. and um, it was not actually going to address the problem that we wanted it to address. Abuse of children is a, is a problem in South yeah. Africa and it needs the, all our resources to be focused on the problem and not drained off because some mom or dad has tapped someone on the hand or tapped them on the bottom. You said um, that this is a, it's an issue for parliament and not necessarily an issue for the courts. Yeah. Can you explain that to me? Well, you, you know, the case was an issue for the courts yeah. and the court decided the case quite fine with the laws that are in place. Yeah. So there was no need to, for the courts now to have to go and make an, another ruling. Um, it is not the court's place to make, um, to, to decide on legislation because the representatives of the people of South Africa sit as members of parliament, in parliament. Mm. They're there for that purpose, to represent the people of South Africa and to actually consult with the people of South Africa with mm. hearings, submissions, etc. And a long involved process goes into this in terms of um, hearing the people of South Africa and factoring all in all of the, that which is extremely relevant. People, if people don't buy into the laws, mm. it's going to become hugely chaotic. Mm. And, and in that way, with the process came, um, and it was thoroughly, thoroughly investigated with very, very um, hot opposition yeah. to, uh, well, at least support for taking out um, the, the clause on reasonable chastisement. So it did not, no, for, for leaving, re yeah. uh, for taking, for getting rid of uh, reasonable chastisement as a defense. So would you, would you say you believe that this is an easy way out into thinking that you're going to solve the violent nature that South Africa has become? Well, first of all, it, I think it is wishful thinking. Yeah. But we also think that it's really problematic that we, we have this kind of, um, we fall into the trap of where the courts are now making legislation. They are not elected uh, representatives of the people. Mm. And, and we do have a parliament of elected representatives who are there for that purpose. Mm, mm. You personally, as a mother, as a grandmother, how do you feel about this? Well, I, you know, me personally, as, as a mother, oh. I did my spanking and I noticed very, I really didn't love it when mothers were going, I screaming at their kids every five yeah. seconds. I'm going to tell your father, just screaming off the wall or isolating their children sending them to a corner or locking them in their room or yeah. whatever, or just talking over and over and over. It's like beating these children and you can see children fading out and deaf ears. One little tap on the bum or on the hand, you uh. get their attention and they, they're kind of <laughs> thoughtful. The next time you they say, you, you want to tap on them. <laughs> uh, you know, so, so uh, what I noticed with mine is when you're very little, you give a tap. Uh. But you would agree that there's a point in age you get to where but you being, don't and you don't by need your, and your you, parents and you don't effective. need to yeah because because you they just take one look at you and they know I I don't want to be in my mom's bad books yeah. you know so so it gets their attention and that's really important for me and and so I don't like hitting yeah but 
I do know that you do need to, to get children's attention and you do need to do it in a loving way where they feel actually you're not ignoring them because sometimes a lot of things that happen are, are attention yeah. seeking and, um, and, and they kind of need to know you, they've got your attention okay, and you're so there now, for them. Uh, I, let's say you live in the perfect world then where you, when you do hit your children, it's in a loving manner and you know it's a loving household and they, they only do things that require like a little tap on the hands. But could you could you understand that there are other households where, you know, no one is 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 disciplining their children out of love. It's out of their own frustrations of what's going on in their lives. Be it they they, they could be suffering financially or they've got alcohol abuse. And when it's time to discipline a child, that energy then is then transferred onto the child. Yes. And that's what these rulings are trying to to, to, to yes. fix. And the strange thing is that that is called abuse and violence and yeah. we have laws in place to deal with that. And as you saw with the court case, our laws are adequate to mm. deal with that. So to suddenly start calling something that isn't yeah. abuse, abuse, you're then draining the resources of, of the, the judicial system, the mm. police, the social development, where we need those resources to focus on dysfunctional families, on areas where people have got these kind of challenges. Yeah, uh, so we, so we, we're draining resources away from that, and we're going to be tied up arguing whether that... Yeah. That, and, and sending functional family, parents of functional families, for, for expensive training. It's yeah. going to cost to have put people in place. We really need those resources in South Africa. We do not have resources that will even spread to where they need to spread right now. And we do have families that are facing challenges, and we do need to be there for them. Mm. Um, so, so for me, look, and the other thing is that if you have the discipline in place from little mm. and you tap a hand instead of having someone get an electric shock by putting it in a plug, mm. you, you actually find that you don't have delinquent children later on. Mm. You have children who think because the last time they did that, they felt a tingle. Mm. And so they would stop to think about it. So these are the kind of things you say when there are problems in the families, yes, if it's the adults who are the problem, it's got to be dealt with. But you don't actually have children being a problem unless they are not disciplined, unless they don't feel that they're getting the adult's attention mm. and they're doing um, sort of more risky and risky things to try and get that attention. Mm. Good point. Let's hear from the viewer. I believe in punishment and spanking, but not abuse. Okay, I believe in punishment and spanking, not abuse. Uh, basically, Excuse reiterating what you're saying. So, as the ACDP, you guys have always been about family values. Just Absolutely. to wrap it up from your side, do you think that this ruling then is going to hinder, um, you know, people building values and building their own DNA of value for each family? Oh, very definitely. It's an uh. intrusion into families. Um, but you'll see also places where there ha have been banning laws, like, for example, New Zealand in 2007. England. Oh. Yeah, and, mm. but the research, but I think England is more moderate. Yeah. New Zealand was more like we're looking at here. Yeah. And, and there you'll find that there's, over that time, since 2007, there is absolutely no indication that anything has improved in terms of abuse and violence. In fact, 136% uh, more abuse and violence mm. in that period of time and, and, and various other things. So, so the, the, the proof is out there. Mm. This is not going to, yes, we want to make sure that children are safe but by disciplining functional parents mm. because a few are dysfunctional that's not going to help it's going to drain the resources look thank you for your time and you've got really good skin for somebody who's in parliament oh, thank you <laughs> and really i'm just like she's not stressed at all they need to work a little bit harder thank you so much sherilyn for expressing the acdp's opinions regarding this matter after the break i'll chat to a representative from one of the ngos that believes that the ruling was in fact a crucial one. And welcome back. Sonke Gender Justice was one of the various NGOs who are in favor of this rule and joined the proceedings as the Friends of the Court. The organization's director of strategic partnerships, strategic partnerships, I swallowed that, and one of its co-founders is here to discuss their stance on the ruling. Please welcome Bafana Kumalo. Sorry, I, I was getting lazy there with my talk. I forgot <laughs> I was getting paid to talk. Bafana, yes. you and I were having a conversation yes. uh, uh, before we came back from the yeah. ad break. And I mean, you know, you were like, are you sent to gorillas? And I'm just like, 
I don't know which side I fall on. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I can listen to Karabo speak and then back her, and then I yeah. can listen to Sharon and speak and, you know, back her. Uh, Sanke Gender Justice, why did you guys decide to be the friends of the court and before this ruling? Yeah. Well, we have a children's rights program at Sonke, uh. and uh, that feeds into our whole intervention where we are looking at transforming our country around issues of respect for human dignity. Mm -mm. And we feel very strongly that in the environment where violence in South Africa is very high, um, we find it quite unbecoming that people should even make excuses for whether people call it chastisement of children yeah. or, you know, smack. Because we, we know from research that children who grow up in an environment where they are exposed to that kind of behavior, mm. learn that behavior. We think the challenge that we are facing in South Africa is that we are lacking in parental skills. Uh -huh. I mean, in South Africa, if you want to own a gun, you must have a license. If you want to drive a car, you must have a license. Mm. But who gives permission for people to be parents? You know, people are learning as they go along. Yeah. And as a result, children become guinea pigs of what parents think will work and mm. what will not work. And we think there are mechanisms, very positive ways of disciplining children, which can move us away from the notion that you can only resolve conflict or mm. misunderstanding through the use of force. So now, uh, let's say I didn't grow up in a household where I was ever touched by my parents, but the emotional abuse that I put up was from them was yeah. insane where parents are chastising you in a, in a, in a verbal a way form, and telling yes. you nothing yeah. now it, to, sometimes that can be even worse than getting a spanking from your parents yeah. where it, it it literally limits you as a person and you take it well into your adult years and then you then you know you continue the cycle yeah how are we curbing that if we're so concentrated on just don't hit them talk to them well, um, I mean, when I talked about the positive parenting, that, that is much more broader and inclusive. It includes mm. emotional abuse. Mm. Uh, because I think the focus sometimes is on the physical side. Yes, because I can prove what, that you hit me, I've yeah, got a scar. Yeah, but I can't but prove, I can't prove that the emotional yeah. uh, aspect of it. And, and, and that is why I'm saying we need to capacitate parents, we need to capacitate people in relationships about how, what is the damage of psychological abuse as well. Mm. And um, in our intervention in court, we made that, that point that it's not just about the physical, it's also about the bodily integrity and the psychological impact that what parents do to children, you know, um, mm. uh, 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 damages the children. And that included those kinds of behaviors as well. So how does this ruling really look to reduce violence in its entirety, because I can see you saying, we're a violent country and yeah. that's the one thing that we need to stop. Yeah, well, the point of the law, I mean, I was listening to the member of parliament, the point of the law is really to provide an environment where all citizens are treated equally, yeah. with dignity and with respect. And I disagree with her in the fact that the court has overreached. Mm. I mean, we've had other inc instances in this country where the court has found justifiably so that the legislature has failed in its responsibility mm. to put measures that will ensure that all citizens are protected. And in that instance, the, ch the court is justified mm. to give a directive to the legislature that they must up their game. And that is the nature of our system um, uh, in South Africa. And therefore, the courts are not just operating outside mm. of the state as in its broadest uh, sense because they have to defend all the citizens of the country. And in this instance, children are also supposed to be defended mm. when their rights are being violated. And I think for us, it was a very important ruling and it makes a very important step in us as a country to say, let us look at these issues that sometimes we don't take seriously, mm. but they have a serious impact. I mean, uh, Shanaz Matthews at UCT with their team at MRC mm. has done a very interesting study that is showing that in cases where there is what is called reasonable chastisement in the home, yeah. you also see the correlation with levels of violence by the same partners on the, uh, on the homestead. So in other words, if somebody smacks the children, chances are very high that they also will be violent to their partners. Oh. And, and so the levels of the correlation between high levels of violence in South Africa and the amount of how people treat children, there's a very tight connection there. And I think we need to, to take a very close look, 
look, given that we already have high levels of, of violence. violence in this country. And just these recent weeks, we've had to deal with many children that have been abused. They are not being abused in many instances by people that don't know them. People, it's people that know them. They and us, they where do they learn this kind of behavior? Yeah. My view is that when we start by allowing certain things as permissible, we are actually sending a message that it is okay to do it. And then the, the, the increment of the punishment increases okay. and it becomes very difficult now to draw the line. Can and I say, jump in here? This is so, acceptable and this is not. Okay, so so we should just stop it from, 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 from the word Okay, problem. eradicate the yes. entire thing. Yeah. So, because, yes, violence, abusive. So did the courts consider, and obviously you as an NGO that, if I am hitting someone in an abusive manner, right, yeah, yeah. which is what you want to eradicate, not the, not the ones who are doing the discipline properly, and that's why even they are not allowed now because you can't control it. Yeah. If I am being abusive in that manner, it means I hold a certain amount of power, even so much as financial power, yes, right? Yes. So let's say now I'm not allowed to, to, to hit you, which is the case. Yeah. What if my then punishment channels itself in another way, remove emotional, we've discussed that, but financial. Yeah. Well, we still have laws in that, you know, as, as a parent, as somebody who has a responsibility over the child, I have a responsibility to look after that child mm. and what is in the best interest of the child. Now, if I fail to honor those responsibilities, I mean, Social workers, mm -hmm. we have challenges there, of course, we don't have enough. But yes. under normal circumstances, they should be able to come in and say, you are failing in your duty as a parent. And the law is adequate that in an instant that I'm not doing my parental duties, those children can be removed from me as a parent. Okay, now, that it's system not is also ideal, backed up and But that up. system is backed up, of course. But all I'm saying is that there is a legislation that mm. makes that um, an intervention that is possible. Now... We need as a society to say, how do we ensure that all these laws that we think are positive, that are helping us to actually achieve the values that we find in our constitution mm. of human dignity, of bodily integrity, that are uh, uh, played out in terms of how we relate to each other are actually implemented appropriately. That is the issue that we should be focusing on. I think on. That's, that's the... You know, all of this is, it, it's good and well, and it's well-meaning. Yes. But I think our the implementation, issue is that's our where the challenge is. Yes. yes. Our administration is yep. not up to scratch. Yeah. And I, I just, in a way, fear that we're making all these laws, but we can't keep up with them. We can't keep up, but I guess we need to do that. I think with this ruling, for me, what is also important is that now that there's no gray area, whether you are chastising a child or you are being abusive or you are spanking, mm. it's now clear that that is not allowable. Okay. Now, in terms of the law, Anel, as you know, if you see me doing that to a child and you're an adult, you have an obligation to report. Because you're so basically watching somebody Because, in other words, once you watch and look the other way, you are just as complicit as me who is doing it. Now, what is that saying? It's saying to us as society, let's get back to the culture of Ubuntu that it, raise, it takes a village to raise a child. In other words, I can't look the other way when somebody does something that is wrong, that is not allowable. I need to raise my voice and say this is not on. And I think, I think through that, in terms of mutual accountability, mm. this message will get to all families so that we find creative ways of disciplining children without necessarily bringing violence into the scene. You drive a good point, sir. I hear you. You hear him as well, right? Thank you so much, Shabafana Kumala, for joining us on the show and for all the commendable work that Sonka Gender Justice has done over the years. We will continue this discussion after the break. Stay right where you are. And welcome back to Real Talk with Anele. Freedom of Religion South Africa was invited by the court to make submissions as a friend of the court. They argued in favor of reasonable chastisement. Michael Swain is the executive director of Freedom of Religion South Africa and is with us in studio today to unpack uh, this ruling. First things first, all of us are like, freedom of religion. 
<laughs> we wonder what happens there. Okay, so if somebody's watching, because I even, uh, on the script, had written FOR, for South Africa, and I was like, right. who's for South Africa? Aren't we all for South Africa? Well, I hope so. Okay, so freedom <laughs> of religion. What's your, what's your position? What, what do you do? Like, before we discuss, according to this ruling, just as, a, as an organization. As an organization, we are dedicated to really defend and protect and promote our Section 15 rights to mm -hmm. enjoy freedom of religion. All right. And that is not just freedom to believe privately, it's also freedom to express your belief. Uh -huh. Because belief is never a private thing. It's not, not something you pack away when you leave home in the morning. Okay. Um, and so therefore that's what we do. We look at numbers of different issues, but uh, this happened to be one where we were invited to give an, an, an opinion. All right. So you argued for reasonable chastisement, right? We are not pro-spanking per se, okay. but we are very much pro a parent's um, conscience and their opportunity, their ability to decide what is in the best interests of their own children. Okay. So we are really interested in perhaps more tools in the parental kit mm. than less. Mm. And obviously if you remove now the uh, ch reasonable chastisement defense, then effectively that is no longer an option at any level for any parent. Mm. And we think that's also problematic even from a public interest mm. point of view. Are there religions who believe that it is their religious practice to be able to reasonably chastise their child? There are certain scriptures in the Bible and I think also in the Quran, okay. uh, which basically uh, allude to that. Now, not every Christian is gonna believe that that's what they should do, yes. but some will and in good conscience they will. And mm. again, I think we must be very careful not to think as soon as we think of chastisement, someone's sort of picking up a shambok and lashing yes. their child. Yes. I mean, in most cases, you're talking about loving parents who love their children mm. and any form of physical discipline is normally a very last resort. It should mm. never be excessive, should mm. always be reasonable, child should know what's happening. But we think that those parents who in good conscience and in their faith before God mm. believe that that's the case, they should be allowed to do so. And in this instance, the judge specifically said that those parents who were of religious persuasion, their beliefs had to now be subject mm. to her ruling essentially of what was in the best interest of the child. And again, there you have a judge actually interpreting scripture for some people, mm. and that's definitely uh, an overreach and an infringement into freedom of religion rights. Do you think that the ruling does in a way dilute uh, certain parental authority? Well, absolutely it does. Yeah. Um, in, in fact, it's, it's interesting that, uh, again, when you see uh, the results coming out of, us, uh, of New Zealand yeah, and yeah. the survey that Cheryl and Dudley mentioned, mm. now, there you have 25% of, of all parents of young children feeling disempowered because they no longer have that as part of what they can do to bring up their children. Oh. You have 30% of children who are threatened to report their parents to the police. So you can see, you oh. get serious upsets in the domestic balance I of didn't think power, of that. if you like. Because um, you're also not causing tension if I feel like I should be reporting you as my parent. Well, of course, and, yeah. and, and things like divorce cases where one parent threatens the other parent. Yeah. You know, so there are perhaps unintended consequences and we do therefore agree that there has been a judicial overreach. Mm. Now, this type of decision, it affects millions and millions of parents and therefore we have a parliament and that process, which is much more uh, debating, it's mm. much more considering of many more opinions, etc. Uh, that is a far better process than really within a single stroke of a pen. Yeah. A judge has now removed that uh, and changed the law. And we think that that is something that Parliament is far better equipped yeah. to do than a single judge, or even two judges together in this so case. Is, so there's, no, there's not a little bit of you that thinks that, you know, we need to blanket this one out because there's, there's too much gray area. You know, yes, if you're in a loving home and you're being, you know, chastised from a lovable man and you sat down afterwards to understand why it is that you were physically punished, there's that one thing. And then there's like the complete end uh, where, you know, parents, you're taking a hose pipe mm. to, to discipline yeah. a six-year-old. Yeah, that's terrible. You know? I mean, again, and let's not conflate the two issues. Yes. Because I think it's too easy to do that. Yes. It's like, you know, yeah. any form of physical discipline, violence against children, and somehow they're all now in the same basket. Uh. And, and that really shouldn't be the case. Yeah. Because the laws deal, and should deal very effectively, with any parent who goes beyond what is reasonable and moderate mm. chastisement. That's what this particular case decided in any event. Mm. What we have now is a situation whereby any light slap on the wrist is now a criminal offence. Mm. And you have to think through the implications of that. Mm. So let's supposing that somebody sees me, as you said, you've got to report it. Somebody sees me giving my child a smack on the hand mm. and they report me. I'm arrested. Now immediately there's a arrest record for mm. me. 
if it goes to court, if I'm convicted, even if I get a suspended sentence, I have a criminal record. Yeah. That can cause me to lose my job. Yeah. That can prevent me from getting future employment. Yeah. That can stop me getting visas. So you understand that it's extreme. all that, is that really in the best interest of the child versus a light slap on the wrist? Uh, we yeah. would say no. Um, and therefore, we think that this defence has actually, in other contexts, been very carefully refined. In the UK, for example, yes. they, they took the trouble there to actually define carefully what it is so that police, magistrates, etc., would have you know, good information that they can base whether or not to charge, whether or not to caution, right. or whatever it is. Um, but here again, we've just had one shot, that's it. And now we're all left facing the consequences. I'm hearing talks of an appeal. Uh, will Freedom of Religion South Africa be part of the appeal on this judgment? Yes, we will be appealing the judgment. Oh. We will certainly be applying for leave to appeal. That's okay. the first thing. Um, and again, on, on, on primarily on the grounds of, of public interest, because mm. we do believe that this has been a judicial overreach, mm. and also on the grounds that we do see that this is also an infringement of uh, freedom of religion rights as well. Mm -hmm. So um, we will be a, a, applying, because again, what I think would be a far better outcome would be for this matter to be referred back to Parliament yeah. and let Parliament debate it with the, all the due process that that entails. Because you're saying that there's a, um, I think you said it earlier, but it could have just passed as you said it, and I think it's important for us to bring it back to that in Parliament there's debate, there's to and fro, mm. you know, people are bringing up, up upon their points, why it's for mm. that, and those are citizens that have been voted for by citizens, yes. whereas opposed to the courts, mm. that is a very different manner, that's just simply somebody mm. listening to cases and then saying, no, this is how I feel. Yeah, and sometimes when a judge does that, it's, it's known as judicial activism, yeah. because they have a particular decision that they feel that they should reach. They and come they, with their own... They may be well-meaning, yes. um, but is it necessarily appropriate? And I think it's also important to say that, you know, many social studies actually have the other result, which is that it is, can be very much in the best interest of the child oh. to experience this type of loving discipline in the home. So it's not all a one-way street. Yeah. And again, if you just have one judge deciding it, you don't get the opportunity to actually hear all sides and to weigh up a reasonable, balanced outcome. Okay, so we've got a voice note. Let's hear what people are saying. Banking, back in the day, it was, you know, fine because parents knew the limits. But now, it, parents don't know the limits and kids end up being injured now, you know, seriously, because of the spanking. So I just feel like that whole value system of spanking back in the day and now is no longer the same. And some people overstep the boundaries of this spanking method that they use with their kids. What's your take on that? Well, I think the answer is, if they do, yeah. then let the law deal with them as it should. Uh. Because again, Let's not conflate the issues of violently abusing a child, which and, is unacceptable at any level, them. and discipline them. You know, we have to teach our children the difference between right and wrong. And yes, there are alternative ways of doing it, but this is, again, one tool in the toolkit. If we don't teach our children the difference between right and wrong in the loving environment of a home, mm. they will learn it the hard way when they get out into society. Mm. And I think we just have to give parents as much leeway, obviously within the, the bounds of the yeah. law, to actually be the parents. The state makes a very poor parent, and we think that therefore we should give parents that ability to make those decisions for themselves, obviously, in love, in reason, never excessive, and all the things that we, I think, agree upon and what we've already had. Mr. Michael Swain, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And now you know who for South Africa is. It's not people who are for South Africa, we all are. They are freedom of religion, South Africa. Some parents might think that this means that their primary method of disciplining their children is now taken away. But there are alternative methods, so stay right where you are. Uh, we'll discuss some alternative ways to discipline your kids after the break. Now that the High Court has ruled that children may no longer be smacked as a form of punishment, many parents are wondering what alternatives they are and how and can they really be as effective, if they were ever effective in the first place. I'd like to welcome Dr. Ken Resnick, an educational psychologist and author of the book Parenting Decoded, Disciplining Kids in the Digital Age. Also Jenna White from the Star Academy, who's the highest qualified applied behavior ana analysis specialist in South Africa. Woo! 
well, today I'm earning my pay, hey? and a board member of the Behavioral Intervention Certification Council. Joining us as well, Nontigelelo Rajuli Masilo, an educational psychologist and co-founder of Capesa, a child abuse center based in Soweto. I welcome everyone with the longest titles in the world. <laughs> this couch is heavy now because of you guys, all of you carrying your titles. Nontigelelo, I want to start with you. I mean, you deal with abused children, you know, face to face every single day. When it comes to this ruling, did you ever think that kids who were being smacked was effective? No, it's not effective at all, Anele. Mm -hmm. If we look at what happens f to the children who have been smacked or who have been smacked by their parents, their behavior changes. Mm. They become aggressive. They become violent. The self-esteem is affected. Mm. And they are not as confident as other children. And what I think is important for the parents is to understand why children behave the way they do. Mm. Because unfortunately, we are saying you shouldn't allow your children to do this. But you are not putting measures to say this is an alternative. A yeah. child has to, instead of doing that, this is what they need to do. Development, understanding development, Development is very important. Yeah. Parents do not understand what the children go through when they develop. We look at physical development only, and we think that that's how they grow, you know? Uh, and we're not looking at how they grow emotionally, morally, and socially. So that is not taken in, into consideration. And therefore, children, as they grow, yeah. certain things happen to themselves. Like, for example, they want to take risks. And parents will say, no, I'm not going to allow you to do this. Yeah. And then they prevent them from taking risk instead of saying this is a better way of, you know, practicing that instead of the, yeah. the other way. Jenna's nodding. And I know with you, you said that we need to look at why a behavior is happening mm -hmm. as opposed to just wanting to then react to it happening. Can you unpack that for me? Sure. That's something that we provide every parent that comes to Star Academy. And it's the value that I wanted to add today. Um, it's to give you just a, a short four-point plan, basically. Yeah. And the first is to, to uh, figure out why did the child engage in that misbehavior. Yeah. And there are four main reasons. To get attention or a reaction, to get something they want, to get out of doing something they don't want, or because the behavior itself feels good or relieves some sort mm -hmm. of pain. So first, figure out why. Step two, make sure that misbehavior doesn't achieve that purpose for the child. Mm. Step three, make sure that they have an appropriate alternative behavior that they can do that you're gonna praise them for um, to get to achieve that, the purpose of that behavior. Mm. And step four, be consistent and always follow through. Mm. Dr. Ken, I mm. mean, um, now purely even looking at the, the, your book, what would you say are the best, you know, the alternative ways of just spanking a child? I think if you understand your role as a parent, which we've forgotten, uh, parent, kids cannot bring themselves up. They have to be guided to adulthood by, uh, by an adult. And that adult usually is a parent. Yeah. Now, we don't, parents don't understand their role, how important it is. If you put a child in a room, just feed him and give him something to play with, he's just going to grow up ignorant, not knowing what to do. So we don't understand that. And the idea is that a child, because we are the authority figure in their life, has to trust us. Yes. You've got to be calm in all situations. It's like us going into the Amazon, we, we put our dependence on that guide. If yeah. that guide starts panicking, the whole group panics. So the moment they're screaming, shouting, angry in a house, the children become to feel, uh, feel unsafe and insecure. And when they feel unsafe and insecure, they behave badly and then they're in charge. Mm. And in so many homes today, there's just shouting and screaming. And, they, and parents are at a loss. So the kids, there's too much focus on sending kids to therapy. Yeah. without helping the parent understand mm. their role. And the parent doesn't go with the therapy, eh? <laughs> it's but just like, like, send you there, come back, fix. There you go, fix it. Right? <laughs> okay, so what I do have an issue with, though, is the whole, when you, when you think alternative things, it just feels to me like those alternative ways are working for higher LSMs. They're not allowed to go into Wi-Fi, they're not allowed to have their cell phones, they're not allowed to have the PlayStation. I mean, you need to understand where we are as a society and as a country is that the majority of us are living beyond the poverty line. How am I raising a child without smacking them when I live beyond that means? You know, Anel, as I mentioned, that it's very important to understand why children behave the way they do. Mm. So it is our role as society to teach parents why their children do things that they are doing. Mm. Because if you hit, you are preventing a certain behavior, you are preventing your child from taking risk, and yet when he becomes an adult, he won't be able to manage risks if anything happens. 
since you prevented him from doing it at the as a child. And as a child. And smacking, it's like a temporary measure. Yeah. They will stop the behavior now because they are scared of you. <laughs> and next time they'll yeah. try to do it better so that you don't see or, and you'll want to smack that child harder. So it's like, you know, increasing the dose it's all the time. And at the end of the day, you'll, we parents will say, I'll kill this child. You feel that you're going to kill the child because it's all about you, all about your anger and the stress that you are feeling. Mm. And you want to take it out and you're taking out on the poor child. So it's very important that you find the alternative means of helping this child to take risk, to explore things instead of preventing that child from doing it. Jenna, because it's natural to do that. Yeah. Jenna, I feel like you're going to tell me I must send my child to the naughty corner. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, but there are a lot of these... Uh, so smacking is something that's generational. I think yes. people are clinging to it because it's w how they were raised and it's how I the people before them were raised. I was exactly. smacked twice a week and look at me, I turned out okay. Exactly, <laughs> but the problem is, first of all, some children do and some children don't. Mm -hmm. Second of all, did you really turn out all right? How do you know? You don't know how you would have turned out had you not been smacked. Um, third of all, there, there, there are problems that come, there are risks associated with things like smacking. Mm. Um, a, a fear response, the child growing up in fear of their parent. The modeling response has come up several times and that's very likely. Uh, another point is that um, research out of Harvard, Stanford, all these major universities that people know produce good research yeah. shows that the, the effects on cognitive development, self-esteem and those sorts of things of smacking are not very different from the, 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 the effects of abuse. Mm. So people who are saying that they smack their children like this, um, it's, it, it, the effect is often the same. So no, not necessarily naughty corner, yeah. but there are some of those common wisdoms that with a little bit of tweaking uh, can be very effective um, strategies. All right, I'm so sad, we're out of time. Uh, Dr. Kent, literally 30 seconds. How do you want to wrap this up for us? Well, <laughs> how I'd like to wrap it up is to understand that Everything a child does is a choice. Yeah. There's got to be a consequence which needs to be preempted yeah. very quickly. Kids have to ask. May I have a yogurt? Sure. These are the rules. You've got to finish the yogurt, uh, clean up the mess, throw the yogurt away. Uh, throw the, uh, the cup away. Yeah. If you don't, means you don't want to watch TV. Now you tell me what you want to do. And let him tell you. And once we don't get the child's buy-in, we're telling them, we're lecturing them, and then we're losing it. We're not trying to understand why they feel like that. Mm. And what do they feel about a rule, etc. And it's amazing, just given the opportunity to, to talk, how kids can respond. Okay. Oh, my child, he, every time I, I speak hard to him, he just gives me this sad face. And I'm like, no, it's just so much easier to say, stop it. Okay, I've learned. Well, there you have it, South Africa. To spank your child is not an option anymore, but there are alternatives, as you have heard. Get their books, read up on what they do. I'd like to thank all my guests for coming through today to share their insights and valuable opinions. Till next time, from the Real Talk team, cheers. <laughs>